All right, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Um, so one evening I came home uh, from work and I had to decompress a little bit, like usual. Uh, and I came home, I sat on the couch and I started looking at the TV screen, which was turned off. So it was complete blank screen and my wife was also sitting in her living room and she noticed that. She thought, well, what, what's troubling you? She asks. So I tell her, well, I have some thoughts about work. It's a little bit busy. There are some changes coming up. Oh, and by the way, I'm giving a talk about uh, building a Game Boy emulator in uh, Elixir. She was like, what, emulator? And she knows nothing about computers. So I started explaining like, well, you know, computers, they work based on a sequence of zeros and ones. And one machine does understand a sequence of zeros and ones, but the same sequence means something totally different to a different machine. So what I'm doing is basically writing a program which takes the zeros and ones from one machine uh, and translates that so the another machine, like a PC, uh, can actually run that, can actually show something. She was like, oh really? I didn't know you could do that. I was like, you're right, I don't know how to do that. So she goes on, well, is it actually a smart thing to do then? Give a presentation on which you're no expert. And yeah, good question. And that is, was actually her way of saying, well, if I were you, I wouldn't do that. Uh, and at that moment, before I could even come out with, a, with an answer, uh, one of our kids woke up and I was left sitting alone uh, in the living room, watching a blank screen, feeling way over my head of, for this project. So that's how, uh, how my journey started. And today I want to talk about my journey of building a Game Boy emulator with Elixir and Scenic. So hearing that, you might think, well, is it actually a good idea to, to do such a thing? Um, and I saw this, I saw somebody build a uh, Game Boy emulator in Elm, and I saw somebody do this. I thought, well, if they can do it, I should be able to do that as well, right? Probably. Um, so th this is uh, just a demo of who somebody built it, like the Shadow of the Beast. And it was running perfectly on 60 uh, uh, FPS per second. I was like, okay, should be doable. And by the way, I also wanted to try out uh, TDD. Like Martin, who is now in the other room, he uh, preaches about it, like you should really try to do that. You know, uh, uh, the, the talk-driven development stuff. Um, in which you come up with an idea, uh, you say you're going to talk about it, and then you have to figure out how that actually works. So, here I am. Ah, damn it, okay, didn't work. So it was meant to be a sound uh, uh, when it dro dropped down, so um, apologies. But anyways, um, a small disclaimer before I start. I'm not an expert, so this will also be a very simplified version of, uh, of the Game Boy emulator. And also due to time constraints, I'm, I'm also not going to show everything uh, that there is about it. Of course, I don't endorse pirating. And uh, you know, for Nintendo, I'm not trying to take your money away, just so we're clear on that. So let's begin. Uh, so what, just... To, to make sure what is a Game Boy emulator uh, and what is Scenic. So Game Boy is a hand, handheld uh, gaming console from 30 years ago. So who has ever played one of these things? Wow, quite a lot. So making you think, well, it was 30 years ago that this was created, you probably feel old by now, right? You're welcome. So an emulator, like I explained to my wife, it takes zeros and ones and transform it, transforms it. But in reality, when you write one, it looks something like this, actually. Uh, it takes instructions from your CPU, and it turns that into a screen you, you actually see. So this is another emulator I used to uh, debug and to, to figure out how things worked under the hood before I actually could write one. Uh, Scenic, it's not a car. Now that I actually know about Scenic, every, every time I drive, I see a car and I think, well, no, that's not, not Scenic. So it is a, a library in Elixir, a kind of a, a big library, actually. I think it will impact, have a lot of impacts on the community, just like Phoenix and Nurse had. Uh, so I think it's also important to try it out. 
Uh, what is a Game Boy? Well, a Game Boy is composed of a, a couple of components, but today we're only going to be talking about the CPU, uh, the memory stuff, and the uh, pictures, uh, and not all the other stuff, because we don't have time for that, basically. So CPU uh, has a clock, uh, it reads instructions, and in order to process those instructions, it has registers. So you can think of registers as uh, a local scope, like variables within a function to execute an instruction. And it has in total like 10 uh, registers, like A, F, B, C, D, E. Uh, but you could also combine them together, like all of those uh, single um, letter registers have only one byte in memory. Uh, but you could also combine them together to form two byte registers. And there are two special registers, which are the uh, SP, the SAC pointer, and PC, which is the program counter. So the program counter keeps track of where we are within a program. Uh, and you have special flags, so some instructions, uh, the result of that is also, uh, can be uh, used to have some metadata to uh, do something uh, with the next instruction. So um, the CPU doesn't have ifs or else's, uh, but it stores information about the previous instruction in those flags, so you can create uh, ifs or loops or stuff like that. So the MMU is like the memory management unit and maps to uh, the CPU to other components. So if you want to produce a sound, you write to a specific uh, part of the memory, and then the uh, sound part will actually t pick it up and produce the sound. The same for the, for the uh, picture uh, stuff. Um, the PPU translates that video RAM into pixels. Um, in reality, the, it has storage for 256 by 256 pixels, but only 160 by 144 are shown on your Game Boy. So we'll talk a little about, about later on as well. So how are we going to express that the code? We'll just use a struct uh, with some registers, uh, which are two bytes long then. Uh, we'll give them a name, and later on we can write functions which can translate those two byte uh, registers into one byte, for example. Then we need some memory, of course, and uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, I just went with one big blob, instead of writing out the specific parts of memory, how they work, etc. And we need some functions to, to go over that, that data, over that binary. So once we have written that, we're going to like the first thing we're going to do is uh, uh, run the boot ROM. So the boot ROM is basically a program which resides in the uh, Game Boy itself. Normally, if you have a Game Boy, you put in cartridges to play a game, but before that happens, this program is run. So these are just, um, yeah, in this case, if you open it in a hex editor, you see this, a bunch of numbers uh, which the Game Boy hardware can, can, can run on. So these are actually all uh, instructions, instructions and data. And if you open up the manual on how those things look like, or on how those, let me have a mouse, I want to zoom in. Sorry, one second. Does this work? Yeah. So if we zoom in, for example, we have the instruction uh, 0A, uh, which is load something to register A from uh, something that a BC register refers to. I think. Can I move the other way around? No, that's too bad. I don't know where my mouse is referring to. But anyways, uh, these are like 250 instructions. Um, but that's only the first part. Because here at the bottom, you see the prefix one. And that actually refers to a second table of even this amount of instructions. And before you even um, want to run Tetris, you probably have to implement most of them, or all of them, which is quite a lot of time. So how can we uh, read these instructions and express this in Elixir code? Uh, well, we just write a function which takes the current state of the Game Boy, uh, which takes the next instruction, which is just a number in this case. And uh, this uh, specific instruction reads uh, the two bytes following the instruction and loads that into the BC register. Is that kind of clear? Yes, no? 
Okay, I think so. Um, so it loads the next two bytes, set study in the register BC, and we update the program counter uh, so we can process the next instruction on the next tick, basically, because there is a function around this one which runs the show and actually reads the next instruction, reads the next byte, uh, uh, pushes that to this function, and then moves along. So, but to think about it, a VM is actually an emulator, right? Or, 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 rather, or, or rather, the other way around. An emulator is also a VM because it emulates a machine. A virtual machine is also kind of a machine, but then a virtual one. Um, so we were building a virtual machine inside a virtual machine. And last time I saw uh, Mikael Muscala, he gave a talk about the, how the Erlang virtual machine actually has a smaller VM machine inside. So we have a lot of VM on top, one on top of the other. Um, so yeah, is that a good idea? Well, let's find out. So uh, for the next part, after you have written, uh, kind of written all of those instructions in code, is to go um, and actually try to draw something on the screen, which wasn't that easy, hence the subtitle. Uh, but the Game Boy doesn't have 50 uh, shades of gray, but it actually has four shades of green. And the reason for that is that it actually has, uh, it actually produces green pix uh, gray pixels, but they, I don't know why, but they put a green, um, uh, like a green glass in front of it. So it seems like there are four shades of green. So just to uh, uh, summarize a little bit, the screen has, if you look at Game Boy, it produces a background. Uh, so it's, it's mostly not moving, uh, it's very still. Uh, it has sprites, so the game characters you see, you see online, for example, Mario jumping around. And it has uh, the notion of, of windows. So it's mostly used to uh, show a score or a menu. If you're playing Pokemon, you often have to choose your Pokemon you're going to use. And for that, they use a window. Uh, but today, we're only going to talk about background. And it consists of tiles. Like Zhu already mentioned, a lot of old systems use tiles to save memory. And it was the same for the Game Boy, because it didn't have enough memory to have a double buffer. It used tiles to, um, to show that. So one part of the memory has the tiles, and on another part of memory, it has mapping to those tiles. So it looks a little bit like this. Uh, on the right, yeah, you have the, the tiles, and on the left, you have the rendering of it, how that actually looks. So once we have uh, figured out how how this actually looks like, it's time to actually start using Scenic, right? Because um, the other uh, reason I started this project is because I think Scenic is cool and I wanted to have a reason to, to, to use it. So let's do that. Um, so what is Scenic? Uh, current, uh, according to the, to the description, it's a client application library. But I like to think like um, a library which provides us a way of building UI applications. But it's geared towards fixed screens and very much uh, connected devices, IoT devices, and not towards Game Boys. Uh, not towards give, uh, building games. So Zhu actually in the previous presentation uh, showed you a lot about uh, the possibilities. Uh, but if you're not uh, building a picture, um, but if you're normally using a scenic for what it was intended, then you build UI stuff like buttons, um, pictures, things like that. So the goals for um, Scenic are very much geared towards those kind of applications, IoT applications. So they should be available, they should be small and fast, uh, they should be re reusable, reusable, sorry, like the, uh, uh, the functions that Deju, for example, showed. Uh, but among the non-goals is a very important one, it doesn't support immediate mode. So what, what is immediate mode? Uh, in green in graphics, there is a retained versus immediate mode when you're rendering stuff. And retained means you have um, kind of a model of what you want to show on the screen, and you don't think about which pixel goes where. 
Uh, so for example, an HTML page, you describe it saying, I want to have a form, I want to have a button, but you don't think where those pixels or buttons or stuff goes. It just works. You tell the library, I want to build a uh, button, and the library takes care of that. But in immediate mode, for example, with a, a Game Boy, you do have to think about which pixel goes where. Um, and also scenic consists of a viewport, uh, which holds our scene, and holds our graph. And on the other hand, it starts the OpenGL C program uh, via a port and pushes like the instructions to draw this line, draw this pixel to that viewport. To, I'm sorry, to that OpenGL program. So some building blocks, we, uh, building blocks where we saw uh, some uh, Bajou. Um, we have the scene, which you can uh, compare to an HTML document. You have the graph, which holds components, primitives, stuff like that. Um, and you have prim primitives like lines, circles, uh, text, re rectangles, which was, I at first thought, well, that was important for my project. Uh, and just like with HTML, you can style them or transform them. Um, and among these, um, the scenes and, and components are actually processes which are very much similar to gen servers. So at first I thought, well, I, I have to draw pixels on the screen, but how do I do that with, with, with Scenic? Because there is no primitive to draw a pixel. So I thought, well, let's just draw a rectangle of one by one, and that will be my, uh, uh, be my pixel. But uh, that means that I have to do that about 65,000 times. It works, but it's not fast. So then I thought, well, the next step I could do, like the uh, example I, I, I shown at the beginning of this presentation, uh, was to use uh, images. So to translate the tiles into images and then to just show eight by eight tiles. And that kind of works better. I only have to do that like a thousand times. Uh, but it's still not very, very, not the very optimal way to do it. Uh, but if you s look here, I, s I say that I actually fill a rectangle with a tile, but does Scenic know how the Game Boy builds those pixels? And actually it doesn't, so I have to translate that, and I have to generate uh, images out of that. So this is a long function, uh, but I want to zoom in on this part. Uh, because in order to do that, I have to write, open a file, I have to write the, the PNG stuff uh, information to it, row by row, and then I have to create a hash out of it, uh, like on the bottom, because that's kind of the identifier for Scenic to know which image I want to draw. And then I have to again tell Scenic to load my file, to load my image. And it means it will go to the file, open it up, load it into memory, uh, and then put it in an ETS table as a cache. Uh, and this is also not a very optimal way. So I thought, well, my project, I have only a month left to, to finish this. Um, let's just, you know. Let's email uh, Boyd and ask what the other options are. I mean, I had some other ideas, uh, but before I uh, would go and um, uh, take all the steps, uh, I thought, well, let's see if I missed anything. Oh, and by the way, um, before I did that, I also thought, well, maybe I can optimize it by just pre-rendering all the tiles. Uh, but you have, for every tile, I have 64 pixels, and each pixel has four different options. So you probably already kind of feel or compute how many options there was are. And for me, it took about two hours and five gigabytes later to find out that that was not a viable option. So then I thought, well, yeah, I'll email Boyd, see if there, there's a different way to do it. Maybe I even have to do a different, use a different tool. Um, and he emailed me back like, well, because a scenic doesn't uh, uh, support this, and maybe it's not fast enough. You know, you, you uh, um, the, the Game Boy uh, has a quick uh, refresh rate. Maybe you want to just use some C, uh, write an if, which has a binary and can poke the pixels at the right place. Uh, so I started doing that, and about uh, two weeks later, uh, Boyd actually created a new version of, of scenic. Uh, which helped me out. So in my case, uh, instead of just um, creating all the uh, 
uh, the images, you can now actually build a texture to, uh, to do that. So to zoom in, um, this also uses C or NIFs behind the scene. So it creates a, a binary, uh, a texture it's called now, and we can load that into uh, ETS table and then basically change them pixel by pixel. So for example, when we animate the frame, when we get a new message to do that, we reduce over all the, the information we have. Uh, I've taken it out. And then we just call texture put to that binary with the X and I coordinates and the color we want to, to have. And then we feedback back to, to, uh, to the cache, to, uh, uh, to Scenic, and it will refresh the, the, the picture for us. Um, because if I've left it out properly, but the, um, the old version, uh, yeah, it's not here, but the old version, um, you had to call a specific function, push graph, which will again send a message uh, to the scene to go over the, all the information to reduce the graph uh, into the pixels that the OpenGL program has to, uh, to do. Uh, but that wasn't that handy because uh, my Game Boy emulator was also written in that same scene. So I was uh, sending tick messages, well, do the next instruction and animate the frame in between, but also the messages to actually update the screen to reduce the information into the, the, the image we need to have. And that wasn't that ideal. So this actually helped me out. And uh, the new version of Scenic was also more OTP compliant. So now at the end of your function as a return value, you can actually say, well, this is the new version of my graph. This is the new state of my uh, image or the thing I want to show on, on screen and just do the needful and, uh, and show that to the screen. Um, and next to that, uh, it also has these kind of functions to, uh, to do something on based on input. And I thought, well, yeah, that's nice. So um, I've been yapping on quite a long time. Let's try and do a, do a demo and see how this works out. If I can get my screen to show. Yeah. No. So we can boot the, uh, the first part. And after that, we should see the Tetris screen showing up. And you can see behind the scenes, I've zoomed out a little bit. But these are all the instructions that are going on. And of course, it's failing beautifully. Because uh, unfortunately, Zhu explained like, well, if you use functional programming, then you can sidestep all the M plus one or the, the off by one uh, problems. But if you're writing a Game Boy emulator, you can't, well, at least I haven't found a way to do that. So my program does run, but somewhere uh, between all these instructions is processing, there is a small bug, uh, and it's kind of hard to find. <laughs> because the, the CPU runs on, on four megahertz, uh, but every instruction is around four cycles. So that means there are about a million instructions, at least possibly, a million uh, instructions processed at one second. So going over all these instructions, checking uh, if the register is correct, is kind of tedious work. Uh, it's not easy, and I haven't been able to, uh, at least yet, uh, to fully uh, fix that. So going back to the presentation. If I can. Um, so one thing I missed, uh, uh, I skipped over, uh, is that although the Game Boy has an LCD screen, it uses actually an old CRT uh, way of, of showing something on the screen. So it draws pixels line by line, 
And in between it has a H blank moment. So the old CRT uh, had an electron gun to shoot pixels at the screen line by line. And the arm had to move back at the beginning of the line again, which was called the, the horizontal blank moment. And the same also once it has fired all the pixels uh, on the bottom, it has to go back up. Uh, so I haven't implemented this in my, uh, in my emulator yet, which is probably also one of the reasons that you saw the screen uh, before this. Because um, the H blank and the V blank also correspond to an interrupt moment in which uh, the, the, the program had time to do something. Because um, as the uh, screen is drawn, like when the, the pixels from the VRAM are shown on the screen, you can't write pixels at the same moment, right? So in order to do that, there is that V blank moment in between uh, in which the programmer has time to update the pixels. Uh, so the next kind of frame is ready uh, for you to be shown. So uh, last stage is, well, we, are, we do have kind of a, a demo. We do have a first part, but there's still a lot uh, to be done to, to, uh, uh, to finish this. Uh, so that means, well, we have finished our stage, but the princess is still in another castle. We have to move on to, uh, to the next one. So with that being said, um, I'll summarize. Writing a Game Boy emulator is fun, uh, but it's not easy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it to, to everybody to do, but it is kind of fun to read about it. Uh, but what I do think you should do is try out Scenic. Like Zhu already showed in a previous presentation, it's very much fun to do it. Uh, I think it, it, it can have a big impact on the, on the ecosystem of uh, Elixir and Elang, uh, and you should definitely try it out. Even if you think, well, this is too hard for me, you know, you never know until you actually tried it out um, and just do it. So I want to thank a few people before I round up. Uh, Manuel Fox wrote the original Elmboy. Uh, he also gave me a lot of support uh, because like I said in the beginning, I, I felt very much over, uh, over my head with, with starting something like this. I'm a web developer by trade. I've never done this kind of low level stuff. Uh, but he actually, he knew that. And the first thing he said, well, be prepared. You're gonna hit a lot of walls. It's gonna be hard, but just, you know, push on. Uh, Boyd created Scenic, which I enjoyed, and he also helped me out. Uh, and I want to thank the people also, the, the core Elixir team for creating Co uh, Elixir and Erlang, of course. And I want to thank a little bit all the people whose only response was, well, you're going to build a Game Boy emulator? Yeah, ambitious. Go ahead, good luck. Like, that's the way I felt about it. And I want to thank you to listening to uh, building an oversimplified, quite naive, half-finished version of Game Boy with Elixir and, uh, and Scenic. <laughs> so my <laughs> name is uh, Tonci Galic. Uh, you can find me on the internet under uh, Toxified. That's kind of my handle. Uh, you can also email me if you have questions. Uh, and with that being said, do you have any questions? Well, first, thank you very much. Here's one. Um, just wondering, uh, how does it work performance-wise? I mean, it's a four megahertz CPU you're emulating and you're in three levels of VMs. So mm -hmm. any ideas? Um, I, I don't dare to, to give a good uh, kind of clear judgment about that because uh, I've taken a, a few shortcuts. Uh, like I've used one uh, big binary for all the memory, while in reality it doesn't work like that. Uh, like every part of the, the big binary maps different chips in the, in the Game Boy and works differently. So if you're, for example, emulating the sound and some bits you can turn off and some not. Um, so I think it's a little bit too early to, to say if it performs well or not. In this case, and also um, I just refresh the screen every 16 milliseconds which does work, but if it's fast enough, I don't know yet. It's a little bit or too early to, uh, to really tell that. But I am actually uh, currently, because it's such a naive uh, implementation, I am uh, quite uh, surprised that it does work this way. So, so far uh, I've been amazed by the, by the performance, but is it good enough? I don't know. 
Any more questions? Um, okay, oh, there's one. Hi, can you please uh, repeat your solution for implementing all the CPU instructions in your emulator? I'm sorry? You showed all the CPU instructions that you have to emulate in your, uh, you have to implement, implement in your emulator. Yeah. The original CPU instructions. How yeah. did you do that? Uh, like I wrote the functions in which, which game, uh, takes the Game Boy uh, current state uh, and actually just uh, as a second argument receives the next instruction. Just show the code. <laughs> show the code, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, uh, I just wanted to say it's a really big file with <laughs> all yeah. handwritten. <laughs> well, also, the fun thing is like there are a lot of those instructions. Uh, the Beam, also Beam a VM, uh, has about 158 uh, opcodes, like the basic ones, uh, versus this Game Boy has about 500 in total. So like Arian said, it's a big file, uh, but the Beam also can, can compose those smaller uh, opcodes, uh, smaller instructions into super instructions. And I don't know how many there are uh, specifically, uh, but I think in the beam there are close to a thousand together. Uh, you don't see this? No. Where's my mouse? Ah, come on. No, it won't do this. Yeah, that's not good, then. I don't know. It won't move my. Can I do this? No. Yes. Okay. Now I need to find my mouse again. So this is kind of the beginning. Uh, this is a wrong file, by the way. Uh, so these are, for example, the instructions I've written out. <laughs> and it goes on and 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 on. So yeah, so it's a lot of work. It's not, yeah, sometimes not that hard, but because there, there are even tiny changes can, can result in an, in an endless loop. And I've had it a few times. Uh, sorry? A test folder. No, I don't have tests. Well, I have tests, but they're, they're in my head. Now, that's also the fun thing, because when I started this uh, thing, I thought, well, there are a lot of instructions and it's easy to make mistakes. How do people test this stuff? I mean, do they run it against another uh, emulator? Or, and we're like, oh, don't worry, the instructions are the easy part. Uh, once you have something on screen, there are some test prompts which run those uh, instructions and they show OK or not OK. Well, they only show OK on the screen if it's OK. Uh, but like in my case, I screwed, screwed up somewhere, so I only see garbage. So I know it doesn't work perfectly like it should, but where the problem is, I don't know. Yes. Um, do you think it will ever be possible for Scenic to target uh, mobile native platforms or it's something that's never going to happen? Um, it could, I guess. Um, like it's, it's not, it's one of its goals. Uh, but I think one of the cool things is also like the, the OpenGL, uh, it uses the program, is one of the targets. So you can set different uh, drivers. Uh, so you could perhaps implement something that also uh, works on mobile, but I think it's quite a lot of work to do that, and it's not one of its goals. Uh, so if you like to do that, you, you're free to try. Uh, I would like to hear a talk about that, by the way. Uh, but it's not one of these targets, and it, I don't think it's going to happen very, very fast. Maybe one more question, somebody. Well, I have one. Um, well, two actually. Like uh, one is, uh, I saw that a lot of those instructions uh, are pretty similar. So, yeah. Um, are you using uh, leveraging metaprogramming to like group fun instructions together, also to create to reduce the surface of errors? Uh, not yet. Actually, I've I've started to uh, uh, to take out some functions. Like the load one is very simple. So I've actually written another function which just takes two parameters or which register it loads from and to which it goes. So I have started doing that. Uh, but on the other end, I'm also kind of hesitant of writing uh, macros because if somebody were to read this code, they wouldn't understand uh, parts of it, and it would be, I mean it would be even harder to understand it. So. 
yeah. I'm not sure which which, uh, which way I will go. Uh, but also, like with, I'm I'm partly done with with this uh, project. I have a small screen I can uh, the first screens I have to uh, show, but there are also a lot of direction I, uh, directions I can take to to optimize this to try things out, uh, stuff like that. All right. Well, thank you very much. One more round of applause, please.